everyone's getting kicked in the teeth every once in a while. Right. You know, like, you, you, it's just how it is sometimes. Right. You got it. You know, that's why we talk about, like, right now, you're in the, uh, in the championship rounds. All right. Welcome. Hey, as promised, here I have Matthew Warner here. Um, look, hey, Matthew, I've been looking forward to speaking with you. Thank you so much for uh, taking this time to, to be on Potty Talk. How you doing, man? Good. I'm uh, very excited to be here. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of fun because you get to, like, watch and listen, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to be on one. So that's uh, <laughs> a little treat. So I'm, I'm really excited. Well, it's fun here. I know what you're saying. Hey, we're just, uh, you know, going to have a conversation and, and hang out together. And, um, you know, again, I just appreciate your time being here. All right, man. So, awesome. So, Hey, so why don't, why don't we start here? I, I want, why don't you t- tell us, uh, you, know, you know, who you are, uh, your company. Do you have a family? you got a wife and kids, you know, where you live, that kind of a thing. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm Matthew Werner, uh, Pine Grove Plumbing. Me and my wife, Kara, we're the owners of that. We have two kids, Levi and Kian. My oldest is nine. My youngest is five. We're in Penticton, British Columbia, which is like a tiny little vacation town in yeah. British Columbia. And uh, we're just uh, trying to make it work. I realized I couldn't uh, couldn't make enough money uh, working for other people, and so I thought I, I'd have to give this a try. So uh, you know, I, I eventually found you guys, and so I'm just excited. Yeah. So you so yeah, that's that's the story, right? Instead of making not making money for the other guys, we want to do our own thing, right? That's kind of the common story. That's that's where I came from as well. So, yeah, 100. Well, percent It. Uh, I just uh, started to realize. I have a background in the military at McDonald's, and systems make or break things. And uh, they're not very sexy, but they're super important. And I've just worked for enough companies where it's like, there's no character and there's no stick. And the ones they have are all wrong. <laughs> and so, you know, I just realized even if I do all the right things, it doesn't make a difference. And I just was like, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way I can like, help the customer. I can get things done. But also, you know, be profitable, you know, work for myself. And so I, I, I needed to do something different. So, yeah, so you're kind of talking about that. What, what was life like before MDP in, in the Success Academy for you? Give, give, paint us a little picture. Well, I think the biggest thing I didn't realize, and um, so one of the books you recommended was, uh, oh, what, what is it now? It is um, The Science of Getting Rich. Yeah. It's a fun little book. It's a little bit weird. Yes. But it just changed your mind because it's like there's more than enough. We're not fighting over something like it's not I win, you lose. We we can all, you know, do well. And so that just changed my mind. I'm like, there, there's enough money. And so I realized we don't have to just say, well, you can only charge 125 bucks an hour. That, that's as much as it is. And you just got to make that work. And so um, it just got me thinking like there, there must be a different way. I, I love that. You're, you're right. That's uh, that fact, Matthew, that, that's a book I still, I'll, I'll read once a month. I'll pick it up and go through it. It's a very thin, it's called The Science of Getting Rich. And I like how you say it is weird because yeah. it, was, it was written like in 1905. It's, it's the, the granddaddy of all the, you know, the idea of uh, creating your own wealth and, and, you know, that kind of thinking and, and that way of living. Um, it's the granddaddy. Everything's built off that. What's the, the, the writer's name is, I think the last name's Waddles. I can't remember his first yeah. name, but it was written like in 19, 1905. So it has, it is kind of weird. It's an easy read. Yeah. But the English is a little, it's a little weird, but, but the concepts are right on. So that book really affected me. And that's why, you know, I, you know, I kind of put it out there and I'm glad to hear it affected you as well. So yeah, hundred percent. Cause it's just like this living in a scarcity mentality. My dad was a refrigeration mechanic. Yeah. He, uh, in an iron worker before that, and his body got beat up before, you know, I'm 39 now. He was out of the trades before then uh, because he was too beat up. And so I always lived in this, like, gosh, I'm in the trades. I got to get off the tools one day because my body's going to get beaten up. And, uh, but I just didn't think it was possible. I just saw all the one man plumbers. They're, you know, some of these guys are 65 years old doing a wrench and it just looked miserable. It's like death. <laughs> and so I, I, I just like, I didn't want to do that. I kind of hoped I'd find a company that would take care of me, but they're not going to take care of you. So I realized I had to start my own business and that it could be done differently and it could be profitable. You know, you can make money and, and help people. 
Oh, Matthew, it, as you know, I, I use the term brothers. You hear me talk, you know, I call everyone, it's brothers and we're in the trades. Because of that right there, I, you know, I talk to guys literally all over the world. And um, even though we may drive on a different side of the road, you know, our, our English may be a little different, you know, yeah. all those kinds of things. Um, but we're all brothers because we, we come from the similar background. My dad was a mechanic. And so the same scarcity mindset that, you know, you got to work here and you hope the company will take care of you. And so this idea, yeah. and so that, that book, that was one of the books that hit me. It's like, like the same kind of thinking. Well, I need, you know, there is opportunity and I can make things happen. I can create something. So, so here, so you, you got that and you started and you became, you know, you joined the success Academy and all that. What was something in the success Academy so far? What, what was an aha moment or something that hit you that made you think different or, you know, something happened for you? No, the honest hourly rate <laughs> and the math, the math doesn't lie. And I like listened to you enough because I started listening to the backlog and then I got, you know, got an academy. It's just like, it does make sense. Like the customer doesn't have to pay for it. It obviously like, you know, you're talking about taco time or for me with McDonald's, like, you know, there's this mindset that we have to pay for our marketing. Like, why would I pay for the marketing? The customer has to pay for it. I'm helping the customer find the service. So it costs the customer some money. And so that, that part of your, what, what, it, what it costs you on your business. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. It's not, I guess I'll just have to figure it out. I'm going to get this $125 as far as I can. I'm going to drive a crappy old van. I'm going to be dirty and smelly and grunt at the customer and just do some stuff and then hand them a piece of paper with a number on it and hope they pay me. Like, I, I didn't want <laughs> to live like that. And so it's like, yeah, I, I, I worked it out and came up with $350. And, um, you know, I've talked to other guys and I don't believe it. I'm like, Customers pay it. I've had people over the moon happy. They, they're like, when can we get you back to do more stuff? You know, like my biggest film have been some of these people are excited. They're like just thrilled that I'm here. I'm clean. I'm friendly. I'm in a nice vehicle. I answer my phone. All these little things that most people aren't doing, but I can afford to do it because I actually have enough money. So I can have, you know, some line answer the phone for me. And, you know, I can book it into software. I can send them an invoice. And it's like, for the right customer, they're just so thrilled. And that was just, it, it still blows my mind sometimes, just how happy they can be. They're just like, when can we get you to do these more things? And they're almost like throwing money at you. You're like, well, okay, let me, <laughs> right. let me figure this out. <laughs> I know, it, it, it's a stra- it is the strangest thing, right? Yeah. So what, but we came into the mindset. So, so what was your hourly rate um, before you, you went through? So I actually, I launched with you guys because basically last summer, I realized I had nowhere else to go in the company I was working for. And so I started looking around. I found you guys and, you know, got like, I incorporated in January, started the business, um, basically beginning of April, but I'd been sort of listening, joined the success Academy, but I knew that if I was going to do this, I didn't want to do what the other guys were doing because it wasn't working. And so. I launched at 350. I'm looking at changing it to 375 just because I've been sort of crunching my numbers more. I have some actual data, you know, because at first I literally had no data. It was just all guesses. Like, yeah. how, how much is the insurance going to be? I don't know. I'm not even part of a vehicle yet. <laughs> but, you know, you know, now I have some things. I'm plugging into the system and it starts seeing what the marketing costs. And, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was, you know, because I've worked for other companies. Yeah, they're charging 125, 115. And, I'm just running around like an animal. You know, you're, you're in and out of the house as quick as you can. You don't have time to talk because, well, I talk to you. It's, you know, it's 50 bucks for me to explain what's going on here. I don't think you want to pay that. So, you know, now I can stop and say, hey, how's it going? You know, it's, I'm so glad to be here. And you can be really nice. And, like, people are excited. Right. So so on that, you hit. So what, um, if I heard you right, like in, in your area, you, you know, guys are charging, which is common, 125 yeah. an hour, 150 an hour. And that's all you can charge. That's yeah. all I can. My customers won't pay. This area won't pay. My market won't pay any more than that. And yeah. You're charging 350 an hour and you're actually getting happy customers. Yeah. I mean, the same amount of pushback, if not less. Yeah. You know, right. so um, that's the way I'm going to pay. They just don't want it, you know? Right. And, you know, but also I can work with people. So I went to a lady's house and it was rough tape and she had a toilet that had been leaking for a long time and she would bought a second one to replace it. And I was like, well, here's how much to do all this work. And she could only afford the toilet. And I had to take it down a bit. So I went to my drop dead 
And I was like, you know, I didn't have anything else going on. So I'm like, I can do it for this much. And, you know, you, you know, do a little, I, you know, I like to be generous. So then I, you know, the, the flange had to be repaired and I disposed the toilet for her. But I was making enough money so I could, so I could be generous. Right. Because I didn't have to race in and out of there. I could work with her and be like, yeah, you know, this isn't great, but we can help you because, you know, you're paying for it and other customers are paying for it. So I have enough money and time and energy that I can, you know, realize that this person needs a bit of help. And, and so, still, and I'm not blown. I didn't lose. I didn't lose my spirit helping them. Yeah, even yeah, by help. So I love it. So a couple of things you heard, uh, the audience here that you heard that uh, Matthew's talking about. And of course, what you learned here when the honest hourly rate is we're charging for all of our time. So we figure yeah. up all of our time, and so that's why you're charging three fifty an hour. But it enables you to do what, well, like Matthew just said. You, you said you could go down to your drop dead, which we learn in the academy is you know, where you cover all your time. But if you did even all your jobs the whole month for just, you know, at your, what we call your drop dead, you'd still be making money. Yeah. But, but what it enables you to do is to be able to help those customers who have a little more budgetary concerns. So you're able yeah. to help, which they love you even more for, yeah. <laughs> and you're still making money because yeah. you started at the beginning of charging all your time. That, that's yeah. amazing. I, lo I love hearing, I, oh, we, we hear it you know, time and time and time and time and time again from the academy. That's, that's kind of that little secret, but let's get back to what was your emotion when you first knowing in your area, and I'm sure your area is not like a big wealthy area where everyone's yeah. living in mansions and they got, you know, burning money in the stove, you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff uh, in the fireplace. Um, it's a regular, you know, working class area. Yeah. How, how did you feel? What was your thought with knowing that, okay, others are charging 125, 150 an hour, and I'm going to charge 350. What was your initial feeling before you experienced this? I mean, part of it is, is I'm uh, with my military background. I get to feel like I kind of trust orders. Like if this is how it works, okay. And like if, as long as this whole thing is in the whole like jam and it isn't all make believe, well, there's enough guys doing it, and I've talked to people, so I'm like, it, it works. It makes sense. And then the idea of just the value stacking. You have to actually add that value. You can't just show up looking dirty and smelly and rough and tumble and then charge that money and expect anyone to be happy. And so I think I just realized, okay, if I can be friendly and uh, develop that sort of relationship with the customer and sympathize, you know, you, you can do it because no one else is doing that. So I think I was nervous and, and, um, I, basically, I was risk, risking my whole life on it. Because honestly, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, we know, like, you, you start taking money out of savings to buy tools and equipment or whatever, and you're like, cool, uh, I'm going to do this. And it this only makes sense at 350 an hour. Because once you know, you couldn't ever go back. I can't just say, well, I'm going to try 350, and if it doesn't work, I'll just do 125 right. like everyone else. Because you, you'd be on your way to death. And so, nervous. But at the same time, kind of excited because it feels like a little secret. Yeah. Like, wait, I can, I can make money. Like I can actually like, you know, be successful. And so, you know, nervous, but, but excited. Oh, that, that's, you know, that's great. Now, of course, how it's work, you know, it works, right? So now yeah. here you are on this side. I love, so you just, you, so you're just starting out. So you, you jumped in, which, which is great. So how, so you're, you're in the investment stage. Okay. Yeah. So you're yeah. in the investment stage. You're looking good. I, I see. It seems like you're in a dwelling. You're not living in a van down by the river. Yeah. Um, and so, how how has it been for you starting out now and in put, putting these you know practices into play? Okay. And you're a few months down the road. Well, what's life like? How, how does it feel? What's what's the reality? I mean, the hardest part is I think uh, my personality type. I'm very gung ho, and so I'm maybe leveraged more than I really have ought to. But at the same time, it's working, and there's a certain amount of putting your feet to the fire, because like you know, um, I went for the master level at Success Academy. I didn't want to miss out, and you know it, that's expensive, and the exchange rate is hard. But at the yeah. same time, it's like I'm invested. I can't just pretend. Like, well, you know, I'll work a bit, and you know, right. but if it's three o'clock and I don't really want to go to it, it's like, no, you called. I am so glad you called. You and me are best friends, and I'm going to come over and help you, and because uh, you need to. There, right. there's, there's, I like, you know, I don't have any other options, right. and so that's been good because it's like 
I actually have to really lean into it. And I'm not really a burn the boats kind of guy. Um, but uh, I needed to. And so I needed to probably be a little bit comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because otherwise, <laughs> I would have just, you know, it, it, it's a struggle. You know, working hard. We probably spent, you know, we've more than we've earned yet. But it's that investment stage. You know, you buy a new ProPress tool. It's 5000 bucks out of pocket or whatever. And then a couple drain augers. And it all adds up. But at the same time, I'm making enough money. And so that I actually have time to think about it. And then be like, oh, you know, do I need to go up? You know, where are all my expenses actually coming in? Uh, and you can factor that in. That's right. So how, how are things looking? You know, what, what's your next step here and going forward? Where, where do you see you taking your, your business here in, in, the, uh, next, I mean, in the next 90 days? Uh, a new vehicle. The, the problem is everything is very expensive. I feel like in Canada, comparing stuff to the States, it's just like, you know, my 2020 Sprinter van was, uh, like seventy six thousand dollars, so it you know wasn't it's all right. It's in pretty good shape, but I feel like it it you know you can't find some of the bargains that you can uh, down in the state, so that can make it hard. But I mean the customer has to pay for it, and you just got to figure that out and factor it in there. It's like yeah, uh, to get a, a nice and you know not the nicest vehicle, but just a pretty good vehicle that's gonna look nice and wrap up nice. You know, that's going to be expensive. Um, I got my brandy done by kick charge here. Uh, just recently, this shirt was like printed on Tuesday, it's Thursday today. Yeah. So it's brand spanking new. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get the van wrap or my one van wrap real soon. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just growing. Um, you know, sort of finding that, you know, balance of pushing forward, uh, but then having enough money so that way when, I don't have a job or, you know, you go to a job and, it, and you, you just can't land it. It's not the right customer. You're not sunk. You know, so it's finding right. that tension, figuring out how tight you can run it, how comfortable with being uncomfortable you can be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, like, you know it's, it's, um, it's important to like take the class and stuff. You can talk to those people. Cause it's like, yeah, everyone's getting picked in the teeth every once in a while. Right. You know, like, you, you, it's just how it is sometimes. Right. But you got it. You know, that's why we talk about like right now you're in the, uh, in the championship rounds as, as we yep. call it. You've heard us talk about that in the Academy, which I love you yep. using the phrase. And I, I know you're involved in the classes and the coaching and all that and doing it because you're using, you know, being comfortable, being uncomfortable, which yep. is an important thing to learn, especially in today. We want everything to be, you know, that, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I'd love to be a, a multimillionaire and have a yep. company and all that, but I want it to be easy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now it's simple as we learn, right? This is yeah. simple, but it's not necessarily easy because we, there is a reality of, of investing in some of these things. Like you said, yeah. chart, like your branding is so important yeah. here, here. You're, you're still a one, one man shop, but, but yeah. you look like a, you look like a franchise, man. You look I, like I've had people ask me, are you yeah. like, are you a franchise? And I like, no, you know, I, I, I don't always let people know I'm the owner, right. but if it, if you're having a frank conversation, I can't lie to save my life. And so <laughs> I'm like, you know, yeah, it's just me and the wife or whatever, but like, oh, well, you like, get someone to answer the phones and, you know, you fill up on Google LSA and all that stuff. And so it gives you that credibility, but yeah, it is an investment for sure. Right. Right. Well, it sounds, it sounds you're making, you're making all the right moves. And I, I, I know that, you know, this time next year, uh, we're going to be talking to a multi-truck, um, you know, millionaire, you know, hey. plumbing business. I mean, yeah. it has to be, because it's not worth it otherwise. This, right. this, this doesn't make sense as a one-man show. It's too hard. There's too much to do right. if you're in the truck. So you just, it's the tip, you can't tip around. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you got your why. So when you get knocked down, uh, you can get back up again. And I've had some days where I'm like, gosh, that was, like, really bad. You know, some lady is just laying into you, you know, pays the bill, and then, but then just hears hear your ear off. You're like, I've never oh. had anyone speak to me like that before, but <laughs> right. you know, you just get back up and well, I got to keep on going. The kids want to eat every day and uh, they like living in houses. So we better keep on working at it. Oh man. I love, I love that you're being so transparent, Matthew, because that, that is the reality. It's, it's growing. You're doing well, but it, it's still, we're dealing with people and customers yeah. and, and stuff. And there's just the reality of life, but uh, you know, we're pushing on through. 
So, well, well, Matthew, just as we're getting ready to wrap up here, um, before you go, I just, you know, what, what's, um, what's a nugget of gold or, you know, a piece of advice you'd have for, for you know, some guy that, that's, that's listening, like, knowing, you know, that's where you're at or before you were, where you were at and, you know, wants to be where you're headed. What, what kind of advice would you have for him? So if you haven't started yet, go listen to all the podcasts. They give it away. I mean, it's all there. If you, if you want to listen and learn, it's all there. And then once you're going to do it, sign up for the Success Academy before you even launch and just start, you know, get your honest hourly rate. It's going to change your life. I mean, if nothing else, you know, that one idea will change everything. You got to do some other things to make it work. If you're still, you know, a butt crack plumber and you're trying to charge your honest hourly rate, it's not going to work. But it'll become apparent. So, I mean, I think it's just trust the system and, and realize that it can work. You just, it's just hard. It's simple, but it's hard. And, um, but it's worth it because otherwise you're going to be stuck, you know, driving in an old Econoline van, half rusted out, <laughs> and you're going to be 75 years old, bringing a rent because there's nothing else for you. And if, I mean, if that sounds good, I guess then go for it. But if that doesn't sound good, which I don't think it is, you're going to have to do something differently. And so, you know, you got to be that eagle, not the pigeon. And, <laughs> uh, you know, you got you to know your why and uh, charge what it costs to run your business. So, I mean, that's it. Play HHR, man. If you, if you can get that, it's going to change your life. I got, oh, man, I love it. I, I love your, your transparent words. It's so real, man. And so, man, I, I really appreciate that. And it's so true. Well, Matthew, yeah. I mean, I really appreciate you taking the time, uh, you know, to be on Potty Talk here and, and to share your wisdom and insights. Yeah. And I uh, just appreciate you, brother. Hey, thank you so much. I'm super excited. Uh, you know, got to get some calls done today still, too. But I just thought, hey, uh, people need to hear it, uh, you know, because it's great talking to the coaches and, and people further along. But, yeah, when you're just starting out uh, and it's scary and you're spending a lot of money, um, you, you, it, it's going to go somewhere. It's going to work. It, it, you know, it's just going to take some time and persistence and, and being willing to put in the blood, sweat, and tears. So uh, I just want to say, hey, guys, you can do it. Uh, it's worth it. Gals, if you know, the lady plumbers out there, just as you guys can do it. It's, it's, it's doable. You just have to want it bad enough. Right on, brother. All right, that's a mic drop right there. Okay, <laughs> you, got, you got to want it bad enough. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, Matthew, appreciate you. And uh, hey, look forward to uh, seeing and speaking with you again very soon. For sure. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. All right, brother. Take care.